Henry Homer Haynes and Kenneth Jethro Burns were known as the thinking man's hillbillies, a mantle Billy Joe would one day inherit. As a kid, they were the first act he went to see. I was about eight or something. Homer and Jethro were down at the Miracle Bread Company. And so I decided, well, I'm gonna sneak out of the house at night and go down there. And I'm barefooted, got a little old overalls on, no shirt. But I got there and uh, there was a crowd of guys smoking and drinking. And I got in there and I'm having to jump around to keep people from stepping on my feet. I decided, well, I'll shimmy up his pole. And that's when they introduced Hank Williams. Came in last night at half past ten That baby of mine wouldn't let me in So move it on over Move it on over Move it on over Move it on over, move it on over. Move over little He just sang right straight to me And when he sang straight to me It lit me up Change the lock on our front door And my door key don't fit no more So get it on over Went on home, got the beating of my life My grandma was like half beat me half to death but I knew then what I was going to do. A lot of what he drew from was his experiences. There's one song called I'd Walk Six Miles of Train Track to Hear Hank Williams Sing. It's a true story. Billy Joe was going to write songs, and to do that, he needed to experience a little more of the world than what he had there in Corsicana. Oh, I was about 15 or something like that. I went over to Boys Town there in Matamoros. Matamoros is just across the border in Mexico about 30 miles from Brownsville. Boys Town is in La Zona Roja, the red light district. As a kid and being a Texan, I think all the boys ended up at one point or another going to Boys Town. There's girls, there's drugs, basically anything you want. You never leave with a good feeling. It's a lot of fun. I went into this one particular joint. I'm sitting there at the table drinking and all of a sudden a bottle wheeled by my head. So. I started throwing my bottles at them too. And there's bottles flying everywhere. And about that time though, the police had come in and they grabbed me a course right off. He was thrown in jail in Mexico at probably 15 years old. I asked this guy next door to me, man I sure could do with a smoke. He said, it's a dollar. So I hand him a dollar and then I realized I didn't have no matches. He sold me one match for a dollar again. And I go to light it, and he said, don't do that, you'll ruin it. You gotta have a piece of this here envelope thing that it came in. I said, well, man, come on, you know, you, you mess with me long enough. He said, well, this'll be it. And I hand him my dollar. And boy, it was the best cigarette I ever smoked in my whole life. Anyhow, I got out. Billy Joe made his way back to Texas and found a job at Cameron Mills, a lumber mill about an hour south of Waco. And that's where I got these fingers cut off. It was a double-end machine. And on the side, there was a steel deal with razor blades all in it, just flying. You couldn't even see it. It was going fast. My glove got hung in there, and he didn't have no safety switch, and I put my foot up against the darn thing. I scooped my fingers up, and it was so strange because I just read a a deal about these Japanese people sewing the fingers back on. I got in my pickup and went over to the doctor's office. I handed him my fingers. I said, can you sew these fingers back on? He said, what? They do it in Japan. And he said, this is the way you go, Texas. <laughs> they one of those deals on me. And the nurse, sir, she looked at me and she said, Mr. Billy, can I have them fingers? She came out with a mason jar. I swear, it already had the formaldehyde and everything in it. And she just dropped them fingers down in her. And she was pretty too, man. I figured, well, this is an end, you know. I'll go to the hospital and I'll come back. <laughs> Every story Billy Joe tells is true. He doesn't write any fanciful stuff. And the idea that a guitar player like him would lose his fingers in a sawmill accident and have such a great sense of humor about it, it's what he, he always waves the audience with that hand. You know? I mean, that'd be enough to to stop most people. 